Welcome to Innovation Dialogue. I'm Diana Dean, and today we are with Jerry Song. He is the founder and CEO of Lingolet. We're going to talk about AI and human interpretation anytime, anywhere. So, Jerry, thank you for coming. Thank you, Diana, for having me on your program. So, Jerry, what is Lingolet, and what problem you solved on the market? Actually, Lingolet is just a startup company. We founded in July 2019. But focusing on the AI and the human interpretation together, so that is the first language service platform doing both. So first language platform. Why you say it's first? Uh, you know, on the market you can see a lot of inter, uh, you know yeah, competitors. Yeah, already many apps. Yeah, many apps mm -hmm. that are using the, uh, the machine translation devices, mm -hmm. and some of them, you know, they do not have the human interpretation at all. Mm -hmm. So we provide you know AI interpretation or AI translation, you can call it. On top of it, we also have the on-demand, professional, trained, mm -hmm. certified human interpreters. So that is a really strong selling point for us to cover the enterprise market. Mm. Well, that sounds a, you know, really the different yourself, your company from all the others. But why those companies doesn't provide this service? You know, building up the interpretation, you know, as a with a human being, with interpreters, that takes a long time. So my other startup company spent like almost two years focusing on the building up the interpreter team, mm -hmm. so which is going to cover like a 185 languages mm -hmm. for professional services industry. So that will take some time. And uh, AI, you know, people talk about technology. It can also replace the, you know, the redundant or some like a, a, the, some jobs that easily for you to replicate, but the human interpretation or language services has very unique, you know, the the characteristic. So it's not easy to replace. If you want to deliver the hundred percent accuracy, the human, you know, professional trained interpreters will do the work better than the AI. I, I do agree because interpretation is like a communication. It's between human, so it's have the, you know personality, the feelings, the imagination, all those, you know, that machine cannot do. Exactly. Uh, but, you know, other companies, they don't provide human service. They have their reasons because mm. the cost. And exactly. also, you know, you, ha you have to build a large team on that. Right. Uh, you are wearing this. So this is the device you guys have, right? Yeah, this how, is how the one. How does that work? Yeah. This is the one we have. Mm -hmm. It's called the Lingolet One. Mm -hmm. So it has the built-in AI translation and also voice to text transcription. It also has the button when you push on it, it's going to provide on demand human interpretation. Mm -hmm. You know, machine translation, we have like a 12 built-in languages, but the field of human interpretation, it covers 185 languages across 2000 interpreters standby. That is a huge. Wow, how, how do you work with those interpreters standby? Because, you know, it's 180 some language. Right. It's a huge. So yeah. how, do you, how do you do that? So we work with the, you know, the other startup I've been with. So we build up the, you know, the interpreter team. So, and we also have the contract, you know, the agreement with the other like uh, language service providers. Mm -hmm. They have the call center. They cover the different languages in the different industry, mm -hmm. like a healthcare, finance, you know, legals. So those uh, have to be like a interpreters has to be trained for at least two years mm -hmm. to get a graduate degree and to get a certificate. So that is really the value of the of our interpretation quality. So Jerry, you are a serial entrepreneur, and I look at your history. You this is your third startup company, mm -hmm. and uh, you are from China and uh, graduate uh, from. Uh, uh, Houston mm -hmm. uh, got your master degree yep. and uh, what brought you to this industry and why are you doing this? Uh, that's, that's a very good question actually. You know, I did uh, you know, the other two startups. One is the you know, network monitoring system mm -hmm. and the other one is in actually it is the language services industry already. So I, my boss, you know, that is a very nice guy, he, he, he's white. He had a girlfriend, which is Chinese. He tried to uh, talk to fiancés, you know, the, the parents. He brought him in. He said, Jerry, would you like to be the interpreter for me? I said, oh, man, this is, you know, too many privacy. Too private. I, yeah. Too private. Yes. He said, oh, man. He said, 
why we couldn't you know, solve the problem of language services. So we need to build up some platform, bring people together. I said, oh, absolutely, I love that idea mm -hmm. because I'm the first generation of immigrant. Mm -hmm. My native language is the Chinese Mandarin. So I speak English. My daughter, you know, in the school, he picked up the Russian, you know, Arabic, Japanese, Korean. So as the new immigrant, we need to, you know, break, you know, communication barriers. Mm -hmm. Cross-cultural communication is always, the, you know, on the top of our, you know, our mind. I said, okay, probably this is a good idea, a good startup for me to devote myself in. So that is the first startup I started by myself as a founder, and mm -hmm. I also have some co-founders to work with me. Mm -hmm. So that is how I started. Yeah, I know that the, our market, the, like Google, uh, they have the free app. Right. And the, all the others mostly are free. So mm -hmm. how, do you, how do you make money? Uh, let's put it in that way. Like, uh, you know, uh, Google definitely has the biggest, you know, the market to push out any technology they want to. So translation for Google is more like a laboratory for them to test on the market. Mm -hmm. They don't make it for profit. What Google try to get is about the data from the consumers, Could from be the users. Could be your privacy. Yeah, you yeah. know, the privacy, you know, the liability, mm -hmm. security, you know, if you want to provide the quality service to the enterprise users, you have to make sure, you know, you protect their data, mm -hmm. which is encrypted while using blockchain technology to encrypt the data, you know, decentralize the data. And also we provide, you know, the, the privacy and the liability and insurance coverage for our business. So you mean that your, on your platform it will be safer for the users? Yep, we use mm -hmm. the, you know, the Amazon mm -hmm. as a hosting in America, mm -hmm. and the, any data stored over there, we don't have direct access to it. The owner of the data are the customers, not us. So that is, a, that is the privacy and uh, we are going to follow for sure. And mm -hmm. also on the, on the technology side, we're using blockchain to encrypt the data, decentralize the data. So that is, a, that is technology we're using on top of the AI. Mm. You are pretty confident, but um, just imagine on what circumstance people will, will use your device mm -hmm. rather than using Google free app. Who are those people? Right, that is, you know, that is a great question too. Mm. Basically, you know, when you are trying to target your customers as a consumers, you are trying to either sell the devices or tell, uh, sell the services. Mm -hmm. But we are targeting on the enterprise users mm -hmm. as well. That is our, you know, the biggest market we're going to focus on. We don't sell just the, you know, the devices, we're selling the, uh, you know, translation and the interpretation services. And uh, that, is, uh, that is how we identify ourselves differentiate as ourselves from the other competitors. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you are thinking about providing this service, mm -hmm. a platform, rather than selling a device. Correct. Or an app, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. But behind this is, could, could be very, you know, a huge a cost. So for now, and what's the level of your company? What state you are right now? Uh, right now, we have some uh, like, uh, enterprise users to, to talk with. So in China, in the US, healthcare industry, and the financial industry, legal industries. We have some beta users in those, you know, to cover those three major targets. We want to, we want to broaden our product. And uh, for sure, as, as I mentioned earlier, you know, data, you know, privacy, that has to be a dream, uh, has to be dream. And uh, what do you do differently than the other, because everybody's seeing that we are pro protecting the mm -hmm. privacy. So what are your company doing differently than the others? Uh, I would say, you know, we encrypt the data, we store the data, and we sign the, you know, the contract agreement, like a HIPAA compliance. If you try to sell your product to the, you know, healthcare industry, you have to pass the certain criteria, get some cert uh, certificate from, the, from HIPAA, which means we are following certain procedures to protect your data, be sure, you know, they are aware of it and put it in, the, in, in our legal you know, agreements as well, for sure. Mm -hmm. I know that for now you are also looking for funding. Uh, how much money are you are looking for? Oh, we do. Actually, you know, our company was founded in July 2019, only six months old. And uh, the you first- You put your self money there, right? Exactly, <laughs> yeah. The, the, the first, uh, you know, the seed money are coming from ourselves. Mm 
So if we want to keep our company growing, we have to get uh, you know, the public funding you know, for sure. And uh, on top of it, we have to build up you know, the, the sales team, marketing, social media, to bring up the more sales on the enterprise, on the consumers. So those need money to, to grow our business. You we are looking forward to, I would say, like a $2 million as our initial mm -hmm. A-round funding. That is the target we're going to shoot for. $2 million. And how are you going to spend this money? Yeah, as I said, you know, we're going to grow up the sales team, grow up the social media marketing team. So more people are working on the you know, outgoing, reach out the enterprise, mm -hmm. you know, the close up the deals, burn up the sales and the revenues, mm -hmm. and then we can keep company grow healthy. Mm -hmm. So for now, you already have this device and you already have the R&D team we doing do. this, right? Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Luckily, you know, for the first the Series A round, we use it on the technology, on building up the team, building up the, you know, the, our platform. So next you know, step for us to grow is just the market, 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 sales and the sales and the sales. You already started. I know that you went to attend the CES show, right? Right, so yeah, we did. So what, what's the feedback there? Actually, I just came back from CES Las Vegas last week. Mm -hmm. You know, we were very excited. You know, we won the you know, Disruptive Innovation 2020 by SVIEF. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a local you know, Silicon Valley based uh, award. But uh, among all those five, you know, the candidates who got the awards, we are the only company, the youngest one with less money. So we made our progress. We're so proud of ourselves. This is a really good beginning for us to, to start our company in 2020. Mm -hmm. Talking about 2020, what's your plan for this new year and what's next? Well, uh, actually, we have to finish the Series A fundraising. We need the money to grow the company. We need to build up the, you know, the sales team, marketing team, grow up the business. We need more people to do the business development and uh, grow up a market not just in the US, it has to be globally, like in, the, in the France, in Japan, Korea, Australia. So grow up the revenue, bring up more sales for the enterprise users. That is my goal for mm. 2020. Okay, so as a founder and a CEO, uh, what's your strength to lead the team become successful? I would say, you know, absolutely as a leader, you have to be more like a you know, approachable. You have to be a people person, communicate well with the team. But I do believe every single person within the team, you have to show your strengths as well. You got to be like a respectful to others, and then you can win the respect from the other team members. Working together, we can deliver, you know, the, the great product to build up the great, you know, the startup company. Mm, you're just talking about respect for, for, to, to others. Um, mm -hmm. If you're talking about Two, mm -hmm. quality you're looking for your team, and what's, uh, what, what are the most important uh, quality? I was, you know, talented, hardworking, for sure everybody, they can define themselves as that type of person. Mm -hmm. But the determination, endurance, mm -hmm. that is on top of it. So building up the startup or working for a startup company is not just, you know, the, like a, uh, 24 by 7 or you know you have to be focused on your on your on your product on your company always you like a standby by stand by 24 hours really, anytime. exactly <laughs> anytime <laughs> anywhere but, but for now i know that you are not even paying them then how do you keep them working that hard uh let them know okay what's the strategy mm -hmm. what's the goal of the company for the short term like a six months or the one year let them be aligned with your goal and then everybody will work with you together that is uh, my intention mm -hmm. yeah i know you uh, for you know uh, a, a month yeah yeah <laughs> and i can you. tell that you are a, a very passionate person mm -hmm. uh, but what are things that can keep you awake during the midnight are you really worried and what's the most difficult time yeah, you have? Yeah, and uh, actually, you know, probably I have a past that age, you know, I don't feel anything really too stressful for me. Past so what, as what like, age? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Absolutely, you have to dedicate your work, make sure everybody got aligned. So as a, mm. as a leader of the company or CEO of the company, you are not going to, you cannot take care of everything by yourself. You have to dedicate your works. You know, we have a most talented you know, sales team, most capable of the marketing team. We have the 
I would say, the best engineering team you know, in the Bay Area. So everybody, they handle their task very well. They work with their team members very well. And then I'm just a, you know, overview, make sure we'll follow the guideline. Uh, you, are, you are very positive. So for you, um, mm -hmm. you your, your industry, mm -hmm. what is the most difficult thing? I would say, you know, as we know, you know, language services is about people. Mm -hmm. It's about a different culture. You know, same translation from one language to the other language could be totally different meaning if you, you know, don't fit in the culture very well. So same thing for managing the team, managing our integration partners, and uh, how we're going to, you know, work with the VC eventually in the future. So it's just more like, a, you know, adaptive yourself uh, culturally, and also you have to know what kind of person you are, what's the strengths you have, and then you can communicate well, communicate well with the other people. Mm. Uh, so, in your industry uh, uh -huh. interpretation, yeah. in the next five or ten years, and what do you see the trend? I would say, you know, people talk about AI. That is a very, you know, popular term for 2019. I believe in 2020, same thing. You know, AI, blockchain, encryption. You know, but I will say, language services. It is very difficult. Or the the very hard industry for the IT or technology to dig in, to replace it completely, like a revolution. No, I don't believe in that. But AI is going to help you, the industry grow healthy, to help people communicate better, and then to reduce the time usage of the, you know, of the interpreters. They can deliver the, the quality service based on the UI, you know, based on the tool they are mastering. Yeah. So the last question is, uh, this is called innovation dialogue. So mm -hmm. what is innovation by your definition in one or two sentences? In innovation is not only about doing new things, you know, getting new stuff. So in my opinion, innovation is about doing the same thing or old things in a more creative, innovative way. Lingolite allows you to reach out thousands of you know, human interpreters in a very innovative way at a very low cost.